Russian President Vladimir Putin has launched Operation Revenge, says Julian Robka, expert of Build Tabloid. A few days after Putin promised to give a worthy response to Ukraine's invasion of the Kursk region, Russian war correspondents began publishing horrific footage and videos from Russians showing destroyed Ukrainian military equipment and mutilated dead soldiers. Ukraine uses 200 to 300 military vehicles and several thousand soldiers in the Kursk region. We see that Russia managed to disable about 30 to 40 vehicles, probably up to 10% of the Ukrainian armed forces vehicles, says Robka. Russian propagandists willingly film dead Ukrainian soldiers on their smartphones, rip blue and yellow flags from their uniforms and collect their military IDs as trophies of their work. Rubka believes that this cruelty is demonstrative. In one of the videos, the bodies of Ukrainian soldiers are piled on top of each other, which could also be a sign of staging. Prisoners also become victims of the Russians' anger and hatred. Black bags are put on their heads, and in some cases, insults and mockery are heard. At the same time, Ukrainian activists and Western correspondents are reporting unprecedented bombings of towns and villages in the neighboring Sumy region, where units are being deployed for an offensive on Russian territory. Brutal revenge has not helped the Russian army much. So far, Ukrainian troops have managed to further expand their presence in the Kursk region in the last few days. At least four more settlements have been captured since August the 14th. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, Russian troops have managed to recapture one village in the last 24 hours. Russia, however, continues to send more and more reinforcements to Kursk. Soldiers are being pulled in from such distant regions as Kaliningrad, Murmansk and Grozny. Airplanes and helicopters are being used more and more often. Operation Revenge is only just beginning, Rubka said. Julian Rubka says that Ukrainian armed forces continue to expand their presence in the Kursk region. In addition to the city of Sudza, the Ukrainian armed forces have taken control of Lyubimovka and Sverdlikovo in recent days and have come very close to Koronevo and Martinovka. The offensive of the Ukrainian army in the Kursk region continues. For more than a week on the ninth day, Russia has not yet managed to to stop the advance of the Ukrainians, Rubka notes. At the same time as Bild notes, Russian troops are advancing in the direction of Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region. Ukrainian Air Force Aviation has conducted its first airstrike on Russian positions in the Kursk region using a fighter jet, reports Forbes. It is reported that a Ukrainian Su-27 fighter jet struck a Russian command post in the village of Tetkino, located a few kilometers north of the front line. Notably, the attack was carried out by a Soviet-era fighter rather than the F-16s recently acquired by Ukraine. Forbes notes that the first videos appeared showing Ukrainian aircraft dropping American JDAM bombs on targets in the Kursk region. According to Forbes, Ukrainian forces have deployed a significant number of air defense batteries as well as electronic warfare systems capable of jamming radio signals and in some cases guiding precision bombs. With a big assist from explosive drones, the Ukrainian batteries have shot down several Russian helicopters. Firing back, Russian artillery damaged one Ukrainian Buck air defense vehicle, Forbes adds. Forbes reports that Russian air defenses around Kursk are also very formidable. This explains why the mentioned Su-27 was observed flying only a few hundred feet above the battlefield after releasing glide bombs. Pilots on both sides are attempting to fly as low and as frequently as possible to avoid detection by enemy radars. While both sides have deployed military aircraft over the invasion zone, Russia may be deploying more military aircraft. There is evidence of Russian bombings targeting both Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region and Ukrainian bases in the Sumy region. The only confirmed target of a Ukrainian bomb is that Russian command post in Tetkino. That is to say, it's not clear the Ukrainians have extended their air power directly over the front line, Forbes notes. According to Forbes, such actions would make sense. Despite the escalation of Ukrainian drone and missile strikes on Russian airbases in and around Kursk, the Russians still have a larger number of aircraft and bombs. The 85 F-16 fighters promised by Ukraine's European allies are arriving slowly and in small numbers. Hans-Petter Midtun, 
a non-resident fellow at the Center for Defense Strategies, noted that it is quite possible the Ukrainian Air Force now has only around 100 combat aircraft after losing several during Russian attacks on Ukrainian airbases this summer. According to him, the invasion will challenge the already stretched Ukrainian armed forces. Before the full-scale invasion, Russia prepared about 300 aircraft for air attacks against Ukraine capable of dropping up to 100 glide bombs per day. In contrast, the Ukrainian Air Force is likely dropping only a fraction of that number. It's worth noting that around the same time Su-27s were bombing Russian positions in Kursk, other Ukrainian jets were bombing three Russian-held towns in the Kharkiv region around 100 miles east of the Kursk salient, Forbes reports. However, despite the severe shortage of aircraft, bombs and other heavy weaponry, Forbes notes that Ukraine's invasion shows no signs of slowing down. We are on the offensive. The aim is to stretch the positions of the enemy, to inflict maximum losses and to destabilize the situation in Russia as they are unable to protect their own border, an unnamed Ukrainian official told Midtun.